correct, right, Mr. Ellis? Correct. And so our request would be that he at this time not be sentenced um, and not the recommendation not followed. I do believe he'll be in transitional housing very soon um, and will there continue on with um, programming to help with his um, recovery. Ms. McDuffie? I um, um, I know Ms. Moller is trying. I, I really do. And I um, I can't. This can't be a hiccup because in order for something to be a hiccup, that has to be an interruption in the series of events that was otherwise going smoothly. On behalf of Devon Ellis, Mr. Ellis, can you state your name, please? Devon Ellis. All right, Mr. Ellis, you're here today. Um, and in this case, you're going to be arraigned on a new violation of probation. It alleges that you tested positive for alcohol via SoberLink device on August 19th, 2024. In violation of the no alcohol condition of your probation, you are, you are allowed, you are entitled to have a hearing in this matter at which time, um, if it is found that you violated or you admit to violating the terms of your probation, you can have your, uh, you can be sentenced up to 15 days in the Washington County Jail, and that is the recommendation. Ms. Muller, one moment. Testing. Testing. I apologize for backup, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. Ms. Muller, what would your client like to do? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ellis does want to waive his right to a hearing. He will admit to the violation. Ms. Ellis, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Sir, it's my understanding you're going to waive your right to have a hearing in this matter. You're going to admit to the violation. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Yes. You tested positive for alcohol via the open link device on August 19th, 2024, correct? Uh, yeah. I find that there's a knowing will and admission to the violation. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. I'm so sorry. I think I missed. He He's admitted to the positive result and all the, um, any missed or late tests as well, too. He's not being violated on that, but let me see what you're talking about. Well, they're actually, um, well, there were those missed tests were in relation to that same date that I see, but then I thought he tested positive again when I read this report the other day. Let me see. Because he had the August uh, 19th, that might not be him. No, he did it, that. Those are all part of the same test where he didn't retest afterwards. So I'm just accepting the positive. The so August 19th? Correct. Okay, I had missed the date. So thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Muller? Satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Anything you want to say prior to sentencing? Your Honor. I think this was a hiccup. He also addressed this violation um, in 14A. Um, he is continuing there on his bond. Um, Mr. Um, Ellis, uh, I know there's been some issues reporting to probation. Him and I talked about that again and providing the proper proofs. He did complete the program at Higira um, in Oakdale. Um, he wanted to go directly into transitional housing or residential housing. Um, I believe the issue was just a lack of a bed. So he is on a waiting list for that. Um, that's correct, right, Mr. Ellis? Correct. And so our request would be that he at this time not be sentenced um, and not the recommendation not followed. I do believe he'll be in transitional housing very soon um, and will there continue on with um, programming to help with his um, recovery. Ms. McDuffie? I am. Um... Um, I know Ms. Moller is trying. I, I really do. And I um, I can't, this can't be a hiccup because in order for something to be a hiccup, that has to be an interruption in the series of events that was otherwise going smoothly. And it's exactly the opposite. I don't think we've even had um, a stretch of time where Mr. Ellis has been compliant and doing even relatively well. I don't, every single hearing that I have for him, there's been some sort of violation. And I know that um, she zealously argued 
for Mr. Ellis um, back in, gosh, I think that was March, where um, he just needed to have, um, he, he was eligible to be violated and sentenced to jail time then. He was sentenced to those five days and they were held in advance, abeyance. And he just was supposed to, um, he was expected, I shouldn't say expected, but his, um, we were sort of given this assurance that he was definitely going to comply. And if he had even one more, you know, missed test, late test, positive test then, but he wasn't expected to, you know, violate again. And I, I just cannot imagine for the life of me, that's all the way back in March, how he's been to treatment was discharged um, or completed, yeah, was discharged and completed that program on August 8th. How in the world do we have a Soberlink positive on August 19th? Um, I don't even know the status of his drug test. And, you know, that was our biggest issue over here. The Soberlink is actually issued in another matter um, because we're here on uh, his drug his drug issues. But I, I just don't, I just, I can't even comprehend why this is something that will be coming up um, at this late date after he's taken all these steps. I think the court has extended Mr. Ellis every single opportunity it possibly could to give him as much leeway as possible to get things together. And we're aware that Mr. Ellis sort of has some issues where he might not be as able as other people to take full control of everything on his own. That doesn't excuse him from compliance. Mr. Ellis still knows right from wrong. He knows he's not supposed to have alcohol. Um, so none of that explains this. And that is aside from sort of the administrative types of questions and issues we have about not, you know, submitting proof of his treatment and, and, um, you know, things like that, or it says that he hadn't contacted or reported to probation at all. I, I know that multiple cases are a lot to keep up with, but I also know that multiple cases are the result of Mr. Ellis's own actions. And, um, if this were really a case of kind of missing a date and a mix up, I think we would see that and acknowledge it. But we're talking about violations of using after treatment, Bef before, after. I don't know about during, but I, I, I just think that we've run out of accommodation here. Um, I, I, Mr. Mr. Ellis needs to give himself the opportunity to do well enough. So that something can be considered a hiccup, but he hasn't even given himself a chance to succeed yet. And I don't know why. Anything from you, Mr. Ellis? Yes, I, uh, I'm actually trying, Your Honor. That's why I completed a, um, a inpatient um, a inpatient program myself. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think I uh, I just need more positive positivity around me like I've been having I I haven't been doing drugs um that's a big step um I just need Miss Duffy to acknowledge I am trying like I'm just not throwing disrespect in the court at or anything that's all I really wanted to say well well I think this is about standards and your standards versus the court standards are not aligning at this point. Because my standard for trying is you go to treatment and you don't have a violation within 10 or 11 days. You violate it within 11 days of being released from treatment. So yes, you're not doing drugs. But yes, you are still drinking alcohol, which is a problem. Uh, I agree with everything that Ms. McDuffie said, quite honestly, and I'm not going to go down that whole litany of things again. So the bottom line, sir, is that when I gave you the opportunity by holding your five days in advance, we had an understanding. You are not able to comply with that understanding yet. So, therefore, you're going to do some jail time and get reassessed. And what I think you need is long-term treatment. If you can't sustain without drinking for a month after you get out, then you really are not there yet. Your program wasn't long enough. So you need a long-term inpatient. 
It is the sentence of this court that you serve 15 days in the Washtenaw County Jail, plus five days for the first violation for a total of 20 days. You must turn yourself into the Washtenaw County Jail by tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. At that time, you will get an assessment for inpatient treatment and long-term inpatient care. I'm gonna do a review in this case in 45 days to see if you've done any of those things. And if you don't turn yourself in, a bench warrant will issue. Probation is um, also continued. So I will see you back here on October 24th, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. Assuming you turn yourself in. If you don't, then I'm sure I'll see you before then. Hey, Mrs. Muller, I'm about to uh, I'm about to give you a call too, also, because I don't know why you told me to do that. Mr. Ellis, give me a call, okay? When you log off. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank you. State of Michigan versus Latasha Williams, case number 17S00891. Hurts me, 